y'all make? story of my life sometimes. Can't leave, can't get home. Beautiful, giant, heavy holly log. That one's almost 16 inches. Hey, welcome back to Engineer's Workshop. Got uh, a number of things going on here. Uh, give you a little bit of an update on progress, on things in progress, and I'll introduce a new project, kind of a fun project, involving uh, some lathe work, a little bit unconventional. So I got the Hartford Super Spacer Indexer off of the K&T and with the help of some heat, thanks to a suggestion by Doozer, Doozer Shop, heat is my friend, I did get the chuck body off of the back plate. And so now I can finish disassembling this. It looks like we've got some screws around the perimeter. We've got an insert on the inside. I don't yet know how this piece is going to come off of the, um, it's, it's like the bore that's in the center here. But all of this gunk scrapes off of here. There's one dowel for indexing and there's three attachment points for this. So we have to figure out how this all comes out of the, um, the actual body something has to separate and I don't exactly know what at this point separates separates uh, this from the the body. If you look at the back side uh, the actual drum here where the the two halves of the brake um, attach yeah I don't know what comes apart from this point so you may have to be pressing more things uh, apart to get this to disassemble further. I'd like to get this to where that rotates a little more freely. It's just full of grease right now, although that's a vast improvement of the way it was. So, on to the next items. Milling a 16 inch diameter holly log, rip cutting it with 36 inch bar rip chain on a vintage two horsepower electric chainsaw. Milwaukee. What could go wrong? But it's, we can't let it sit like this. Beautiful wood. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Bark's only like three eighths of an inch thick. Big texture. Looks like one of those up and down old sawmills. We have a mountain of sawdust out here from my son uh, milling the holly logs. 
with the electric chainsaw and maybe a little bit of help with the uh, steel chainsaw, the 041 AV Super. 50 year old chainsaw, still going strong. Here's the beast of the Milwaukee two horsepower electric chainsaw with a 36 inch bar. And uh, I think he had this set up to do two inch slabs riding, yeah, riding on the top of the previous slab and then uh, taking the next cut. And the 041 AV Super, I don't know if he ended up using the power head off this at all, but uh, let me show you how he's drying these. He rigged up a kiln, and the kiln is an insulated box with two heat sources externally. We've got the 15, uh, maybe they're 1200 watt heater fans here and here. We've got an internal circulation fan, and we just recently added three 250 watt heat lamps in here to get a little bit more heat into the box, which is currently enabling the box to get up to 138. Um, he has this temperature controller set to kick off at 140. He's going to cycle it at 140 for a while. It ultimately has to get up to 180 degrees, but the wood is still coming up to temperature from the last, you know, when we added the um, 250 watt heat lamps in here. So I think that it still maybe has a little bit of a way to go and it will be able to maintain that 140 degrees. Yeah, that's the good stuff. This is my current favorite coffee from a little uh, boutique grinder in my hometown of Warren, Ohio, Top Shelf Coffee. They make mostly for uh, wholesale, like at the restaurants and stuff. So I asked the restaurant where I had the coffee, you know, who, who supplied them. And lo and behold, they will sell to the public. So I bought five pounds and I mean, really reasonable five pounds under 50 bucks. But I think I got a mug too from them with their logo on it. Now the secret to good coffee is keeping a seal on what's in the bag and until it's ground it should be sealed. So my son got me this neat little German grinder that will grind about three scoops of coffee at a time. It has a ceramic uh, hopper, cast iron grinding body and originally had a lid, wooden lid, with a rubber, soft rubber seal that fit in that groove, which was crumbling into pieces. So I no longer have a seal right there, and we store and go through a lot of coffee in that. So here's my thoughts. Obviously the original um, rubber lip is no longer available. This thing's probably from the, I'd say from the 50s to the 80s maybe, 70s at the latest. I couldn't find a rubber lip that fit in that groove, but I found one that pretty closely fits the um, ID of the hopper, but it is too thick and there's not enough diameter here to make it work where that will be retained. So my thoughts are take a piece of two inch brass, turn that down a bit and make a donut, which will press over top of this. I'll probably have to turn this down somewhat and uh, make a press fit for the brass and then a groove to retain the new silicon seal and this should last pretty much forever. So I got to come up with a plan of attack for machining this and what I'll be starting with uh, always McMaster car to the rescue a nice overpriced slice of two inch brass round this was like 25 bucks. I'm not sure if my son paid 25 bucks for the whole coffee grinder, but uh, you know, we're, we're overkill here. So we've got this lid 
wooden lid and that lid has a center projection small hole in it and it goes back and has that skinny groove that is too thin to hold the um, new silicon rubber flange and then this is in a cavity it looks something like this so we have eh, half to three quarters of an inch between the diameter of this and the OD that we have to machine I believe I'm going to take this down to a one inch diameter and the reason I'm going to do that is if I drill a hole here and bore it to one inch, I can hold this with my um, slitting saw arbor. So I can put the slitting saw arbor in the lathe, put this on, uh, cap it, and then uh, turn my OD in my receiving groove, and that'll be nice and concentric to to this bore. Not that it, you know, concentricity matters. It's a seal for a coffee lid. So anyway, uh, face it. Uh, flip it over. Well, I'll just, I'll face it, I'll bore it, then I will hold it in the slitting saw arbor, clamp this side, and uh, machine the OD. I'm going to have to take some of the OD down. I'll have to measure it uh, so that I have a good amount of engagement with the um, with the silicon rubber and that it can't it can't fall out. Now holding the OD of this is going to be interesting because I've got this wooden uh, disc it's a, and it's completely rounded on the top. It's about three inches in diameter. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, let me show you. I'm going to make a, uh, a donut, probably out of plywood. And I'll make this ID a fairly close fit to the OD of the lid. And then I'll just split it in half. And then that way I can put this in the four jaw chuck, clamp nice and snugly on, the, on this two piece wooden ring. And that will gently hold the OD of this uh, wooden lid without marring it. You know, I don't want to destroy the, you know, this nice vintage surface that it has. And then I can move this around independently and indicate on that wooden center uh, to get this running true. To machine this, I'm gonna take a router bit. I'm gonna basically set it up like a boring bar where I'm gonna plunge cut the router bit into this uh, as, it, as it spins and uh, take this diameter down. I'll probably shoot for about a 10 thousandths press fit into this, uh, it's wood. I do want it to be tight and I uh, don't want it to ever come loose. If it ever does come loose, I can always crazy glue it or epoxy it, but uh, that's my plan of attack. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little update and uh, new project introduction. Got the Willis here, uh, kind of taking a back seat on my son's project list while he works on the Spitfire and he wanted to get this uh, holly, these holly logs started to dry because he said that if you don't process those quickly and get them in the kiln, they lose that whiteness. Holly is really kind of known for its very, very light color, and <laughs> it's pretty high dollar. He found some sources on Facebook Marketplace with um, holly uh, already milled and dried for $30 a board foot. He's got quite a bit in there. He's got two inch thick slabs, 15 or so inches wide by six to 10 feet long which can be resawn in half. So he's, he's got a, a nice little pile of valuable lumber in that kiln, assuming it, it, it comes out nice. So uh, in other updates, Big Red is going to be moving out in the next couple of weeks. Bigger Red, the um, F600 or the F850, I, don't, I can't remember what it is, is gonna be moving out also. So that'll enable us to have a little bit of room. I think I'm going to set up the beach table saw in that space. It takes up about the same amount of space as a, as a full-size vehicle. So people will be able to see it and try it. Um, hopefully somebody wants to buy this thing, 
Uh, I'd love to have Keith Rucker buy it and add it to his tool collection. Uh, he's got woodworking tools, he's got metalworking tools. Uh, does take up a lot of room, but you know, it, it, it needs to go to a good home. So thanks again for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, I'll try to be back again next week with another video. And until then, as always from Engineers Workshop, stay safe. Mm -hmm.